Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's MATLAB lecture, we'll be covering ODE 45. So, ODE stands for Ordinary Differential Equation. The 45 is just one of the several ODE solvers that uh, MATLAB has. So, before we start, let's go ahead and show the differential equation problem we're going to be solving. So here it is. We have y double prime plus 2y prime plus 9y equals 0. This could be solved easily analytically, but we're going to see how MATLAB can help us solve it. Now, ODE45 only solves systems of first order differential equations. So in order to plug it in, into the ODE solver, we're going to have to decouple uh, this second order differential equation into two first order differential equations. So first, what we do is we write y double prime on one side of the equation and the other terms on the other one. So we get y double prime equals negative 2y prime minus 9y. Then we're going to create the two variables that this is basically we're going to end up solving for. So y1 equals y and y2 equals y prime. So basically at the end we're going to end up with a solution for y and a solution for y prime. Next, we're going to say y1 prime equals y prime by taking the derivatives of both sides of the equation y1 equals y. And y prime is also equal to y2, so that's how we get this line. Next, we'll do something similar for y2. y2 equals to y prime. So y2 prime equals to y double prime, which equals by default in our second line negative 2y prime minus 9y and by substituting what y prime is and what y is we get that y2 prime equals negative 2y2 minus 9y1 so our final set of decoupled equations will be y1 prime equals 2y2 and y2 prime equals to negative 2y2 minus 9y1 and this, you know, this last two lines is really what we need. So, with all that said, now we're ready to go into MATLAB. And I'll bring back those equations. So, first let's do clear all and CLC. Now, let's define the span of time over which we want to find a solution. Or basically, you know, we, why is what we're finding? What about the horizontal axis? Because those were all derivatives with respect to a variable. Let's just say time was that variable. So we'll create time span, which basically defines this, the range of horizontal axis coordinates that we want to plot y over. And we'll go, let's just do from 0 to 2 for now. And I'll call this time span for different. Differential equation solution. Next, let's create our initial condition. So y0 equals, and basically it's the initial condition for y1 and y2. So y initial condition is 3, and y prime initial condition, I'll set it at 5. Next, we're gonna we're gonna be calling our ODE 45. So t comma y, that's what we're solving for, we're going to get as an output time and y, and you have to put both because they're going to be coupled, you know, the time and the y for that time. Then we type od45, open parentheses, we use at, open parentheses, t comma y, close parentheses, and then we write diff underscore eq, t comma y, comma, t span, comma y zero. All right, so let's explain what just happened. Here, in the first part of the line of code that we wrote is going to be the output of the differential equation of ODE 45 solver. So we're going to get time and y, and they're coupled. So we're going to have two columns, and for each row, we're going to have a time and its corresponding y position. 
then we're going to have the ODE45 in here. We're calling the variables we're solving for. And here is the name of the function that we're plugging into ODE45 with T and Y being inputs into that function. And then here's just time span and the initial conditions. Why not? Or Y0. So, you know, I, you heard me say the function. We need to create a function that we're going to run or input into ODE45. So since we already covered functions, you're ready for this. So we're calling that function diff underscore eq. So let's pull our differential equation. Okay, so step one is write the word function. And the output is going to be dy dt equal diff underscore eq because that's what we're calling this function t comma y so now we need to define what dy dt is so dy dt equals and you're going to have to put it each equation in a separate row so let's go back to this we know that y1 prime equals y2 and now this is dy dt so we're defining the derivative and we said what did we just say we said y1 prime equals y2 so all you got to do here is type y parentheses 2 close parentheses do a semicolon to go into the next row which will define the next differential equation we have here y2 prime so we need to write basically negative 2y2 minus 9y1. So negative 2 times y2 minus 9 times y1. Close it with the semicolon, type end, and you're good to go. So now we save this file. So we go to our original file. So now that we have the output, t and y, we're ready to plot. So we would do plot. We put t in the horizontal axis, then y. And remember, y is going to have two columns. It's going to have the y1 solution and the y2. y1 being your position, y2 being your velocity. Let's go ahead and plot just position now. So you're saying by this is y. I want all the rows of my column vector, but just the first column. Next, let's do hold on, so it keeps the, the first plot, and we're going to plot over that. We want uh, we want to see the zero line, so t in the x-axis, then t minus t to get the zero line, and let's do it as a dotted or a dashed line. So let's just add a comment for clarity that this is we're plotting or plot zero line as a dashed line. Uh, let's go ahead and add a title to get fancy. Y versus T. And let's say X label is T. Let's say it's in seconds. And let's define the X limit as T span. So that way, if we change the span, We'll change the limit. And let's call this figure one. Let's go ahead and copy all of this, paste it, and change this to figure two. Let's change this to a two so that we're now going to plot basically the velocity or the change in y, the derivative, right? And we'll change this to a prime right here. And we probably should have added a y label for both of them. And we'll just say y. And y prime. Mm. We'll just have to do dy. Okay. So now we save and we're ready to run this. One second. Mm. Same thing for the title. Dy. And let's run. So here we can see both plots. 
and that's our solution from 0 to 2. We see that it's oscillating, and in this case, you know, the position is going up, it's increasing from 3 to roughly 3.25 or whatever that is, but the velocity is decreasing because it's about to change direction, and as soon as it gets to the top, right here, it stops, so the velocity is here at that point, and now it starts to go in the negative direction, you see that it's going down, 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 and when it gets to this bottom point here, at 1.2 seconds, the velocity again is roughly zero because it changed directions. Now it's going up, positive velocity, and you go up. So let's now see what happens if I increase that to time span of four. Okay. What we see is that the solution, or let's see, y versus t, is basically a sine plus cosine function that is decaying over time. This will be kind of similar to a spring that has some damping that you have at some initial position you let go. It's going to oscillate over time and then come back to rest. And here we have the velocity again. So let's go ahead now and change this to 5. And we can see that the position is roughly coming to 0. And if I go to 10 we can see that the system basically gets stabilized right around 5. So this will be our solution. Now what happens if I change the initial position to 20? Interestingly enough, yes, the oscillation will start at a higher value of y, but it will still get stabilized around 5 because the system dynamics which were defined when we created that function are the same. We're just going to get a different curve but still stabilizing over at the same point which is way beyond what this course covers uh, but I wanted to show basically that you can solve both and you know compare different inputs and kind of reach some conclusions fairly quickly without having to go through the analytical solution every time we just got a numerical solution for this differential equation which is what ODE 45 allows you to do close this and with that, we have reached the conclusion of this lecture. Um, I hope you find it very useful. The truth is that some systems, it's better to go ahead and just solve it numerically so you can go ahead and get an answer and kind of get an idea what the system will be doing based on the differential equations that you enter. While others, it's best to get something analytical so you can find the true solution and just change the parameters and, you know, not have to run every scenario. But it will depend. Sometimes you're going to do that analytically for some for some system of equation, or at least not easily. So I hope you enjoyed learning this lecture. And the truth is, don't get caught up on how to decouple equations or any of that. I mean, you can solve simpler systems. I just wanted to make sure to show uh, somewhat a little more complicated so you could see how how the ODE solver can be used for other types of differential equations, just not a system of one differential equation or a simple linear one. This will be a linear differential equation. Let's say if you just got rid of the y1, you would just have y prime and a y. But this can be turned into two simple problems and you can use ODE 45 for that. So there's a lot of problems you can solve, differential equations that you can solve with ODE 45. Very powerful tool. So that covers this lecture. Thank you for joining and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.